Oh, this is a camera only here. I doubt anybody's gonna drop in here, but using this instead of Loom just to um, record a quick demo. I found this thing called Unit Visual Programming, uh, Visual Programming Environment. It's similar to Node Red. It's more futuristic looking. It's really, really cool. So it's taken me a couple hours to figure out what's going on. I've read some of the source code, not that that really helped. And I uh, thought, yeah, I would just jump on a stream really quick, maybe like a two minute stream to record and uh, document what I figured out. So maybe if somebody sees this, I'll throw this on YouTube too. Uh, so if you're watching on YouTube, thanks for watching. Um, but you know, just the, the getting started was really rough. There were some sample GIFs, but there were no instructions. So I thought I would just run through um, what the uh, interface is like and how to actually get started. Um, I was already fooling around here and had made a flow. Um, so I'm just gonna refresh the page and uh, clear everything out here so we can just start from scratch. So I've got the developer tools open here because I wasn't really sure the best way to see output, but I did find a console log widget in here. Uh, but when you first load the page, this is what you see. Uh, it's pretty sparse. You see some tools over here. If you hover over them, um, the icons tell you various things. So the top one is info. You can access info by holding down Q on your keyboard. The second one down is change. I believe, let's see, is that A, S, D, F. F is change. You can hold uh, F down. D for remove. S for add. Um, A for data. And then shift uh, for the multi-select down here. And then at the bottom, here's where you have your palette um, or search bar where you can go and look and see everything that you can add uh, to the stage here. And there's a filter button here, um, circle is related to unit things, client platform unit things, and square is related um, to input like UI elements. Again, I'm not really sure what the intent is since there's not a lot of instruction, but I was trying to think of like, you know, what are some simple things that I could test out. And the first thing I tried to do is just, how do you make something console log out? So you search in here, so search for log, and you click on it, drops it here. So everything kind of uh, synthesizes in the center of the screen in this area. And so you see there's a message and a log. And so you can double click on this message and you'll get an input over here. So if we type in four and hit enter, uh, it logs out four and that value disappears. So it's consumed that value four and it logged it out. Uh, if you double click again and put that in quotes. So now that's a string, double click again. We can put this uh, in brackets and you see it, it's an array. And then um, hopefully as you would uh, expect and you're already ahead of me, uh, you can do curlies and you can create an actual object. So that's how I got started. I was like, okay, so I can log things out. I can put um, data types in through this input by double clicking on, on one of these node inputs. And I thought, where's well, somewhere that I can you know store this? Um, something more than console log. So I typed in storage. Um, there's tab storage, session storage, local storage. Uh, we'll just play around with local storage. So you, you get local storage out here and I'm just clicking and dragging these things around. So I'm gonna hold down Q on my keyboard. And if you, you'll notice here on the left, uh, the info widget lights up. So now when I hover over this by holding Q, um, you get a little more information about this unit. So it persist data on local storage. Uh, and if we hover over this one, print log on the console. And notice it's got little tie pins over these pins. Um, I don't know you know, if the author of this is going to add more information. In some cases, you will get explicit type information. So if it must be a string, you'll see that it's a string. Um, so the A generic type, I think it just means it can take anything. Uh, but you will see any referenced as well. So I'm not sure the difference there uh, when any is used versus the uh, A in the uh, greater than less than sign. But anyway, so, so you have local storage. So I don't know how to do anything with local storage. So I started looking around like what is local storage platform API. And so then you can search for platform. Is it platform I found it or API? Um, but I was able to um, search for one of these and I found some stuff digging around um, and I'll just jump to it. Basically there is a set and there's two set methods. They're set on an object and then there is set on a platform method object. So I'm gonna, uh, we'll synthesize both of these. And so we can compare the difference. So a set on a platform object, again, we hold Q uh, and pull this up. It'll set unit property name to data. And this takes a unit uh, with the type of J. 
And then set here on an object is different. This has a key value and an OBJ object. We hover over this, you can see that's actual object. Keys can be numbers or strings, value can be any. Um, so when you click on something that you wanna connect, it will actually show you what you can plug this into. So you get a little green circle on uh, valid pins. So we can say, I wanna set on local storage, some key, uh, and we'll just use the key foo. And then I wanna set some value and we'll set it to the string bar. So same behavior that I experienced before, those values get consumed. Uh, we do see something, some log message over here, but let's go refresh our uh, local storage here. And you can see foo is set to bar. So the next little adventure on, I was like, if these are constantly consuming these values, how do I hang on to a value? And sure enough, if you search for constant, uh, you can see that you have this constant it says F control. Uh, if you look at the source code in system, it's in the Git repo and I can I can search for it and pull it up in just a second. Um, you can go and look at these functions, but the source code didn't make a lot of sense to me, but you can take us a, a constant value here. And so I can set this to our key foo. And you can see it just outputs foo. And I can hook that up to name. And now when I plug in a new piece of data, blah, then the data gets consumed, but the key hangs around. So I was like, that's pretty cool. How do I get some sort of data that changes? And so I started looking around. So I found this input uh, and there's a name and a unit and you get a pin and that didn't, didn't really help me there either. Um, if you keep looking for input, you can find text input. And so text input, I tried playing around with this and I was like, okay, just, you know, type in foobar. How do I do something with this value? You can't connect it to anything. So notice when I'm clicking it, it doesn't light up as green. So you have to find something that'll convert this input widget to a value. And I found that with on watch, the search is kind of buggy. I think, yeah, watch, watch change. And if you, if you look when it synthesizes, it shows you there's a watch change, to, which will take an element and produce a value. And there's watch input, which will take an element and produce a value. So I'm just gonna try watch change. I don't remember what I had done before, but now when I click on this element, you can see, oh yeah, you can, you can connect those. So um, connect here, have my text input foobar, and then value comes out as foobar. And now uh, I can plug this into data and let's refresh over here. And so we see the value is set to foobar. If I change this input now, double clicking to activate it, and we'll say, hello world. If you caught that, I don't know if the frame rate's quick enough on the recording, this this chain flashed yellow. So this chain that's currently gray, these links here, uh, they flash yellow. It's gonna show you that that flow activated and executed. And so now we can refresh over here and we can see hello world. And so I'm gonna hold down D and clear up my canvas here just to delete some of the stuff. Um, we'll probably needed that console log. Let me grab that back. So then I was like, okay, well, if I have a value in here how can I read a value back out? So I have foo as the key, uh, this text input's changing the value and it's sitting in local storage. So how can I get this value out of local storage? So the same as set, there is a get platform method and we can connect local storage to that unit and we can connect to this constant to the name and now we can see the value comes out, hello world, which is good. Um, and we can actually hook that up to console log here and that'll fire and we see hello world. So now if I change this, goodbye world and hit enter. These, this flash, you probably didn't see it on the stream. Um, and then we get the log, uh, goodbye world is this evaluated. We can refresh up here, goodbye world. And I ran into a situation where it wasn't always updating the output as well. So if we change this to goodbye, um, and so then I started playing around like if I wanted these to be completely disconnected. So if I didn't want this to fire every time I updated storage uh, here, uh, there was another node in here called a delay, which was pretty cool. So you can come into delay and set up some number of milliseconds. So I can say every 500 milliseconds, I want to emit some value. And so every 500 milliseconds, I can actually emit the constant foo and then I can run with a different copy of local storage and a different copy of get, oops, yeah, let's just get, I keep wanting to say get value. So with a completely different copy of local storage here, 
uh, this every 500 milliseconds is going to output foo and then that will cause this to execute and I can get this value goodbye and once again uh, we could uh, plug this into a console log here and then we should start seeing did I set that up right oh uh, our delay got consumed yes of course it did uh, once again we need a constant uh, here so we'll just say 500 for 500 milliseconds and that'll give us a constant input into this delay. And now what are we missing? Let's see, 500 milliseconds comes into the delay. Maybe I should split these apart. Let's, uh, let's unhook this just so we can see this separate flow. So I'm just holding down D and clicking on things to delete them. So 500 milliseconds comes in a constant here, goes into our delay. So that'll prevent that from being consumed by the delay and i think i deleted the value on the delay i'm not sure how you get pins back so i've messed up that delay so let's get a delay back here there we go so we want the output of the delay to go into the name and then here our constant will give us a 500 milliseconds and let's just go ahead and do another constant uh, instead of sharing the other one oops double click on that so we can add the foo string and we'll plug that in here and so now uh it's pulsing and so we are we have a get uh from local storage that is running and then let's um let's delete the get here really quick let's set this up again because i think i lost another node when i disconnected those um so i want to get oops that's the object get wrong one let's hold down d there get platform method there we go so local storage get foo value goodbye and then up here we say hello again so we should see this update after uh half a second five or milliseconds ah oh, maybe i still don't have it wired up right that's what i was playing with before i jumped on the stream now and i thought oh, i'm gonna stream this because it's pretty cool the delay runs uh it outputs this value but i may still have something not not set up right Delay was number string, outputs a string. Plug that into get value here. Let's throw that onto a console log. Because maybe it just realizes there's no drain on this and it's not actually doing anything. There it is. Yep. So that's pretty cool too. So however these flows get evaluated, um, they detect that there's no output there. And so I had to actually have that drain into something. So that's pretty cool. But there's all kinds of stuff in here. There's uh, for loops and, and things. You kind of have to figure out what to search for um, and look around in here. But I may dig through the source code and figure out how to make an index of this and maybe generate some additional documentation. Because I find the whole concept um, of this platform very fascinating. Yeah, switch this over to foobar and then that runs. Yep. Anyways, that was that. So just a short stream uh, just showing off uh, unit. So it's I-O-U-N dot I-T. And uh, it was just unit flow programming. Let me figure out how to uh, maybe add show notes um, on, well, I can certainly put in YouTube.